never speak of this footage. Outside this room. Um, when I uh, when I've been living in London for a few years, um, there's a band I was really into called Arcade Fire. Um, I, I, you may know of them. At the time they were kind of culty and they were just about to get big, like headline stages at Glastonbury and played Brixton Academy, much bigger venues. But at the time, they announced this, um, this tiny performance in London in uh, a place called Porchester Hall, a little ballroom sort of near Bayswater, Notting Hill kind of way. And my friend Lola and I were really keen to go. So on the day that tickets were announced, we called up and uh, and we were not lucky on this occasion. We didn't win tickets. And apparently the tickets sold out in 60 seconds. I just wondered how that was fucking possible. <laughs> like, who can read their credit card that quickly or their address? Like, ah! <laughs> 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 okay. but, it, but it did. So we meet out the front of Porchester Hall in Notting Hill. And we're standing there, it's fucking freezing. We're clasping these pear sliders in our mittens and we're asking everyone in the queue, oh, do you guys have any spare tickets? No? Okay, fine. Go up and ask the box office. And they're like, no, it's, it's sold out. We're like, okay, okay, fine. And then security say to us, girls, can you just clear the way? We're trying to get everyone into the venue. If you could just move back. We're like, okay, fine, fine, fine. So we go and stand down the pavement a little bit. And there's this like kind of maybe 15, 16 year old indie boy who comes up and he's wearing like a jean, a t-shirt and jeans in the snow. We're like, what are you doing? He's like, have you guys got a ticket? And we're like, no, what, what is this? What are you doing? And he's like, oh, I've never been to a gig before and I just really love Arcade Fire. I've got their CD, so I thought maybe you could just come down and go to the gig, right? Buy a ticket. I'm like, no, that's not how these things work. So I'm like, where's your jacket? And he goes, oh, I don't have one. I told my parents I was going to maths class. <laughs> I'm like, oh, dude, good luck. And he's like, thanks. Good luck to you guys, too. And walks off down the pavement. After about five minutes, Lola reaches the end of her pear cider and she's like, you know what? I'm freezing, and her hands are shaking, and she's kind of flicking snow off her mittens. I'm like, okay, you know what, this is silly. I'm really sorry I dragged you out here. She's like, yeah, I've got, I've got to go. And she's like, are you coming? And I said, oh, I'll, just, I'll just give her five more minutes, five more minutes. She's like, oh, Panetto, you're crazy. And I'm like, yeah, but she's like, okay, well, do you mind? I'm like, no, no, you go. So she chucks her can in the bin, and she walks off down the street, give me a wave as she goes. And I'm just about to give up myself. And I start to walk away. And I look down the side of Porchester Hall and there's like a snowy cobblestone alleyway with kind of beautiful Victorian sort of London lanterns shedding this gorgeous golden glow down over the street scene. It's really pretty. There's a couple of fox prints and stuff. And then I see on this side entrance of Porchester Hall this heavy iron door open right at the end of the alleyway. This is like not a commonly used entrance. I don't even know what's going on. But I see a silhouetted face lean out and wave at me. I look at the face and I, I wave back and then he leans up and a bit of the Latin light catches his face and I can see that it's Wynne Butler, the lead singer of Arcade Fire. <laughs> Firstly, his name is Wynne, this shit just writes itself. <laughs> but he's kind of doing this, come here, come here, I'm like, oh my god. This can only mean one of two things, right? <laughs> Either he's trying to sneak me in, or he's trying to pull me, and both are good. <laughs> so I do what your mum says never to do. I run towards a strange man at the end of an alleyway. I'm like, oh, <laughs> And I'm super, super obvious too. Like I'm trying to be subtle, but I'm like, no! <laughs> I get to the end of the alleyway and I can hear touts back up at the mouth of the alleyway on the main street outside the main entrance because this is like a fire entrance and I can hear them going, hey, what's going on down there? And security are kind of milling around now. I'm like, shit, so I jump inside this heavy iron door and it's completely dark. There's loosely tethered cables hanging around, there's broken chairs on the floor. I'm like, whoa, where am I? What is this? And he's like, quick, just get in. And as he asked me to start heaving the heavy iron door shut with him, we're pulling it, pulling it, pulling it. And the last shot of light, I see the little kind of skinny, freezing cold indie boy walking past completely gormless to what's going on. And I look at Wynne Butler and I'm like, wait, can we fit just one more? And he's like, what is it, Schindler's List? <laughs> <laughs> loves you guys and he's like okay quick get his attention so I lean out I'm like Psst, get, get. and he doesn't know that the lead singer's in there he just sees me and he's like all right <laughs> <laughs> he starts running towards me and as soon as he gets to me he's like by now security I'm like what's going on and they start running down towards him uh, toward, towards all of us and he gets nearer me and as soon as he gets near me or near enough I reach out and I grab him by the wrist and I pull him inside like some kind of sexual cougar I'm like all right <laughs> he's like oh, be gentle on me I'm like, oh, so we get in 
side and the door shuts with a thud and we're in absolute pitch darkness now. There's not even exit lights. We're really not supposed to be here. And the laughter starts. Like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And the kid's eyes get accustomed to the dark. And the kid looks up at him and goes, oh my God, are you the arcade fire? <laughs> and the like, no. But listen guys, quick, I need you to act quick here. We're, we're literally supposed to be on stage in a minute. And uh, he kind of takes one of my hands and he takes one of the kids' hands and he puts them on each pocket. He's kind of wearing this military jacket and we're like, okay, what are we doing? He's like, just follow me. And so in the darkness, we kind of just walk along, <laughs> stumbling over cables and stuff. And we reach this kind of rickety metal kind of ladder thing and we start climbing up and up and up through the bowels of Porchester Hall, this place we know we're not supposed to be. And then we start running down darkened corridors towards this sort of shadowy figure. We're like, I guess he knows what he's doing. Then we turn a corner, we turn another corner, and we crest a bend and we end up, boom, in this really well lit room. And in there is the band's dressing room. And there they are standing there resplendent in all of their regalia and all of their instruments ready to walk on stage in about four minutes time. There's like harpsichords and guitars and drums and they're all beaming. You know what this means? They do this at every gig. Don't pay for their shows, people. It's yeah. great <laughs> in the alleyway. <laughs> and Win Butler's wife, Regine Chassan is in the band. She chucks me and the kid a beer and I'm like, I don't think he's overage. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> She's like, have fun guys. I'm like, I will, I'll be in the dark with your husband. Um, <laughs> and he says, quick, 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 we don't have long, follow me. And so he runs us down a corridor and he turns and he looks the kid and me in the eye and he says, listen guys, down there, you see down there the red velvet curtains? And we look and you can hear a dull thought of crowd noise coming from behind these curtains. And we're like, yeah, okay, yeah. And it's like, that's the gig. Just run through there. Don't look back and don't get caught, okay? And we're like, okay. And so we run, we run. And I grab the kid, right? He's kind of got hold of my jacket. I guess he thinks that's what people do. <laughs> and we burst through and we're in the gig. And within about 10 seconds, the band walks on. It was absolutely fucking brilliant. It's such an amazing show. And towards the end of the gig, I feel this sort of pressure on my wrist. And I look down and it's the kid and he's, he's kind of just holding my hand because yes, he doesn't know where to go or, or what to do or who to talk to. He's all alone. He's supposed to be in maths class. And I'm like, are you okay, kid? And he looks up and I can see that he has tears in his eyes. And he goes, Sarah? And I go, yeah, kid. <laughs> and he goes, I've never been to a gig before. Is this what it's like? <laughs> and I'm like, not always. <laughs> Sometimes you have to pay. <laughs> <coughs> so, I've got good news and bad news for you guys. Which do you want first? Bad news. Bad news. All right, all right, chaps. Okay, here's the bad news. Remember my friend Cliff's theory about the car? Okay, that there's one in your friendship circle? By virtue of the fact that you came to my show today, you will never win a car. <laughs> 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 Sorry.